Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 268, October. I, I don't have anything to say about October. It doesn't feel like it's October, but the rains are here. These meetings are recorded for those of you that aren't with us right here, right now. Hope you're enjoying them. Uh, let's talk about what we're gonna talk about today. Uh, Zach, Ron, Bert are here. Welcome all of you. If anybody else is out there, go ahead and say hi. It's great to have you here. What are we doing today? We're gonna do issue triage right off the top. Uh, get that kind of knocked out, things to move through. And then I want to talk about this uh, thing that's been floating around that we're calling virtual symbols and the Wix standard lib and how they hook together. Uh, I've been moving this along. Last Thursday, if you joined me for Let's Code a Full 90, you got to see a spike into this. I'm going to talk about that more. And then as always, we'll take questions and comments. So let's just get right into it, Bob, and do triage. Ready? Sounds good. Triage. Okay. Whip. Number 7605 is all about this virtual symbols and standard libs and things like that. I want to talk about those. Uh, we will be able to talk about them in the context of these default symbols, like default major upgrade and default yada, yada, yada. So um, we'll talk about this in a bit, but not yet. So we'll do more there. Moving on then to 7737. .NET compiler to check with platform x64 aborts on x86 OSs. Mm, so if you try to check for x64, then you fail on an x86 machine. Yeah, it's, uh, okay. I, I, I didn't really follow along during the development of this feature. Um, but, you know, the way it's accomplished is with an x, well, with xes, plural, embedded in, in binary table. Yeah, because that's what Visual Studios or .NET or yeah. one of them said the right way to do it is, which is silly, but yeah, all right. Yeah. Um, yeah, no comment there. Um, but you you need each platform's binary, apparently. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, and you should. Well, I mean, just for for hygiene, yeah, you should use a platform specific version. Um, the problem is that you know it just kind of blindly extracts the uh, the specified XE. And runs it, which you know is going to fail if there's a mm -hmm. if there's a platform mismatch and no wow to to smooth it over. All right. So yeah, and there's a pull request open for this. So there that's, is, that's and good. if you scroll to the bottom, you will see a comment from me saying, "Hey, triage." Oh, possible Take return codes. Okay. Yeah. What are we looking at? This thing here? So, yep, right right there. Um, I, I looked at the at the pull request and currently it uses negative one as the you know mismatched platform value. Um, which first was like, uh, do we want to do negative one? Because we get into the whole you know size on the signed stuff. Yeah. I'm also a little worried and the the person who pulled pulled the pull request, sent oh. the pull request, yeah. or pushed a pull request? Yes, yeah, push. Mm. Opened. Yeah, you push a pull request. Oh. I like that. Um, pointed out that, and if you look at the code for the, the net core check executable, you'll see they have their own, you know, uh, pseudo facility code yeah. um, that most of their error numbers or return values are, are in but they also use one and zero. So I'm like, uh, negative one is, looks very, you know, open to them. So I'm thinking we should, you know, pick another number outside of their, their range and away from negative one, zero, and one. Okay. Um what number to pick, huh? Yeah, that was, yeah. So I'm a fan of odd numbers, so I went with 65535. Five. Uh, no, that comment doesn't make sense. Yeah, Jacob, 42 is, 42 makes, <laughs> 42 is a great number, no. Um, this only returns these numbers, like it's gonna return a finite set of numbers, right? Correct. So we could pick like three 
Like, like literally any number not in this ginormous range of numbers. Well, yes, except, you know, they do also return zero. Right, right, right. So, I mean, like, yeah, like zero. Like, there's a huge range of numbers all over. And then we should not pick one of those, clearly. Sure. I was just trying to avoid, you know, ranges that they have poked themselves into. So that was my that was my objection to negative one or one. Right. Where do they use one? And you're saying in their code somewhere they actually use one? I thought so. I might okay. be wrong about that. Th that's fine. Um, yeah. Um... But you know, there's no there's no guarantee. I don't expect it to change, but you know, there is no guarantee that they're going to stick to this set. Yeah. I would love it if they were, you know, to make that commitment, but they haven't. No, they don't make many commitments. Um, um what, we have a facility in Wix, right? That we've we, uh, our own pseudo facility that we've picked up out of the blue. Not um, really, I mean, yeah, we Burn use... has one. I know Burn has one because Burn has a couple H results that it creates. Okay. Uh, for itself, basically the same thing here. Um, yeah. If we could go into that range and pick it up around what Burn is at, I guess we could formalize our H. Except these aren't really H results, but yes, these are. I mean, these are essential. Well, these are essentially H results, but I, yeah, these are H results. They're turning into H results here. No, no, no. They're well. Sorry, they don't follow the the. <sighs> these are generally errors, but they do not have the error bit set. Why does it say H results? That's uh, mm. <sighs> everybody doing things wrong. <laughs> Yeah, and again, you know, they're not, I don't know if they were intentionally avoiding negative numbers, um, but, you know, that's what an error H result turns into. And sometimes that's a little confusing. Yeah, they are big. and I appreciate that. that they, that they, you know, stake a claim to a range at least. Yeah. And that's my point. Like Wix, we have a brain, well, burn has a range and then we have a bunch of numbers for all of our custom actions, but they're all right, individual. Right. I mean, the numbers get reset for every action, though, so. Well, we try to prevent them from overlapping. And and that doesn't yes. really apply here. This isn't an, you know, this isn't an MSI yeah. error. Right. That's what I'm saying. This is a whole new space, another space of the world. Yeah. Yep. Agreed. We just have to fit into theirs, which is, does not, we have to fit in with their errors where the architecture does not match. Uh, right, without without being able to actually participate in their range. Well, we could. We could come in here and go number number seven. <laughs> we could. I would give it to them. Against it. I mean, we could just say, hey, here, we've defined no. this for you. You were missing this one. We gave it to you. You're welcome. Yeah. Why does I'll this have sure lowercase i l e on it? Sorry, what? But I, I sorry. I, this just caught my eye. Make it bigger. Oh, that is. Who does this? Who does this? That's. See, this is why I don't <laughs> want to play in their space. <laughs> oh gosh, who does this? Um... <laughs> I don't like any of this. Um, I don't care. I don't really care. That... And, I, and I don't have any. I don't have any principles to apply to this. I just don't no. care. It's like ten. I don't know, six. I know something that's like, what's the chance that they come out? They've taken zero. You said they have a case where they could turn one, maybe. Like, we could take two. Oh, no, they start using two. So yeah, that, again, maybe Jacob's fine. right. We just go, all right. Maybe Jacob and Zach are right. We're just going to go with 42. And anybody that asks is going to be like, yeah, the .NET guys are crazy. Here's 42. And then go from there. Are you, are all right. You all right so, uh, I can't so, tell. I, I, I don't have a better number. Um, well, we could do Wix after dark and I could claim 69, but yeah, yeah. I, I thought about that, but I, I, I went against, <laughs> I didn't even say it. Um, you're, you're welcome. you did, you did. Yes. Uh, I just, I can't believe we're spending this long just trying to go over the error number. 
I, I, know, I don't. I know. This is worse care. than naming. Yeah, because it it matters outside. Oh, there you. Zach's got a good yeah. point. <laughs> Number, I like Zach's idea of thirteen. Um, yeah, how about thirteen? It's not that far off. It's a, it's all that, and we'll just go from there. I mean, the whole thing is just. Uh, one I, option would be to return theirs, but that's not really. Mm, yeah. No, the the values here are all documented in the Wix documentation as return code. I know, but we just can we not we say return. that if you failure to load host FXR because the architectures don't match? That's what you get when the architectures don't match. I, I I I'm throwing it out there. I don't know if I like the idea, but I'm throwing it out there as what if when the architectures don't match, you also get load host FXR no runtime installed. I don't know. Architecture mismatch will end up returning no host installed. Maybe it's not as bad as ideas I thought. Everybody paused. Like maybe, or or it's really bad, and we're just trying to figure out how to. Say I figured it. if it was really okay, fine. I was like, it was really bad. You're going to say something, but yeah. Um, um, well, no, I was trying to determine how how gross it made me feel. Um, the truth is the use. The use case for this is almost certainly, you know, not zero. Not zero, right? That's what I was thinking. Also, like, do you really care about the exact number? Maybe you do, but if you're going to use the the exact return value, then it's going to be so you can construct a message. I can't. I mean, no one is going to do this. This is entirely theoretical. Even I wouldn't do this. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, uh, hmm. it's it's either, my vote is either that or I'm with Zach thirteen. I'm fine with thirteen because it it takes me out of the single digit values that they might theoretically start using. Right, forty two feels like really far away. I kind of like forty two as well, but it feels really far. I don't know why it feels far away. It's like whoa, here's this really big, like that's a random number. Um, at least thirteen feels like in the range of well, maybe there really could be thirteen errors. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, let me let me just say this. This is such a weird thing. I do not want to give it the the benefit of being labeled forty two. We should <laughs> save right, that for right. something much more important. There's the principal position we now. <laughs> yep. Of, oh gosh. Yeah, and they can't even capitalize their um, defines correctly. So, thirteen. Uh, <laughs> thirteen. All right. Fine. I'll let you you communicate that back. I will do that. X core si whistle consume and X core one time X six is going to be loaded. I'm sure I see number crap Wix slips inside a Wix lib. Build this X eighty six. Build this. You can't do if you built. I don't understand. That's that's not this issue. That that's a different issue. I don't know what that is. Painter, you have to go do that. Yeah. All right. So Zach and I are on the exact same page on this issue, just for the record. And I don't have a strong enough opinion to really fight for any of those numbers. 13 is fine. Um, app ID is a child of package. We get a null exception. Well, that's not great. So I wonder why we allow app ID to be child of package. There's probably some reason some way that that makes sense inside msi uh go ahead and give this to me i'll go fix it oh maybe because it's yeah something busted a uh, condition that spans multiple lines does not convert correctly to wix 4. ah ron if you would like this is uh the option if you wanted to pick that up that would be cool because yeah, so uh, sorry, this is 7739. Condition that spans multiple lines does not convert correctly. The converter is inserting the new lines as hexes or their hex representation, the ampersand, yada, yada, yada. Um, and it should not do that because that's not a valid character inside MSI condition syntax. So it's like the converter should just, you know, nuke that new line and carry on, carry on. Um, if you want to take it wrong, that'd be fantastic. 
Um, if Ron doesn't want it, then I probably should take it because we really should keep the converter clean. Um, and this can happen. So I'll give Ron a second to see if he wants to jump in on this one. I expect he'll be like, oh yeah, I got this. And he'll have it done in 15 minutes because he's done, Ron's done amazing things in the converter to get like white spaces all sorted out, which is <laughs> next level. Um, so anyway, this is an option. Let's see. It's not expected to work inside a Wix lib. We're coming consumed by a package of an arch. I don't. Wix lips have an architecture. Yeah, right? Right. Wix lips have an architecture. architecture. Right. So, you want so a yeah, when you... that contains multiple platforms, things for multiple platforms, you have to include all of them. We have the same problem in all yeah, of them. Yeah, we have this in Wix. Right. Yeah. And this is a. This is a feature that we'd like to be able to have multi-architecture Wix lives or rework the way well, architecture work. Like we have that whole discussion. Automatic architecture Wix lives. Yeah, or something. So yeah, that's it. All right, great. Ron, Ron says he'll take it. Woohoo! Um, fantastic. And yeah, what you're talking about there, uh, Painter, is that yeah, you can get a specific architecture in your Wix lib, and creating multiple multiple architecture Wix lives is challenging. Very challenging. Wix does it, so you have to look at how Wix does all those things. Um, all right, just advance. All right, uh, Wix four not honoring NuGet packages environment variable. Hmm, that doesn't surprise me. So this is seven seven four zero, and the request is to support NuGet packages as an environment variable. Seems reasonable. Well, this is is this reading them or writing them? Um, uh. <sighs> There's this thing, I only know because I was an extension manager recently trying to figure out why my extensions weren't resolving. Um, and there's like a, a thing, uh, a thing, a, a function you pass in, or there's a function that you provided by NuGet that you feed in and say, hey, go find all the packages in all these folders or something like that. And right now Wix is using the default, which apparently doesn't include the environment variable or something like that. So uh, this can go up for grabs. If somebody wants to do it, that'd be great. You know, go in there and update the extension manager to look in more documented locations. So, How is that not the responsibility of the NuGet client? Oh, well, because they, well, I bet the NuGet client does. Well, which part of the NuGet client? The API or the XE? My bet is that the XE has a whole bunch of stuff that it calculates. It says, here's all the things I'm going to do, and then feeds it into the API thing. And so you have to replicate that functionality. Can I say that's dumb? I, it's all about where do you want to chop that layer and they chose to chop the layer at one place and you can say that they chopped the layer at the wrong level if you want. That's totally fine. I will. Fine. I will. Go ahead and say that. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there are many, many things that we'll eventually find over time of, hey, here's all the different ways that you could configure NuGet. And right. People can add them if they want. Um, NuGet config works, so yay. Um, need a plan to handle Wix 5 documentation, 7753. Uh, Bob. Yeah, so we should have a plan for how we handle documentation for Wix 5. <laughs> Thank you, Captain Obvious. Um, Colonel. Colonel. Colonel? <laughs> mm, yeah. wow. So yeah, much for the Navy. Um, <laughs> you went in the Army, dude. <laughs> Maybe that's not Air Force. Shit. Air Force. Oh, Air Force. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. Lieutenant Colonel. Whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, fine. Um... So basically, we, well, we've never dealt with this before. Um, but no, we, we dodged it with V3. Yeah, when we have, you know, really annual releases, this is going to become a bigger deal. Um, you know, where, well, specifically, we don't want to get into the state we got into with Wix 4, which is where, yay, we're munching up the compiler and doing all our, our fun stuff and not documenting it. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we need a way to handle V5 stuff coming in while you know, Wix 4 is what's shipping. So you know, I came up with two brilliant ideas. I'm sure there are more. Um, you know, we just annotate the doc as well as we can um, with, you know, I don't know, new in Wix 5 or Wix 5 only, whatever. But coming up with how we annotate, especially given the, you know, the relatively limited formatting options we have in Markdown is 
worth a look. Um, the other option is to, you know, fork and start, you know, populating a V5 uh, doc tree and then figure out how we, you know, manage the unversioned paths going forward. Um, as I point out right now, we have a problem that, you know, we can barely build the current doc set with all the schema and API reference pages in the current version of Docusaurus. Um, I don't know that the that V3 of Docusaurus has done much to expand those limits. So forking would probably not work without some extra work, which might be trivial or might be, you know, oh, we have to throw out Docusaurus and Move to Hugo. No comment. Okay. Hugo. Um, yeah, the... So to be clear, it's not forking, it's versioning the API. So it's it's not like we're not going to fork the thing. It's putting a version number back in wow. the URL. Just just to be clear, like not forking like is in forking the website. Um, in a get well, I, I considered it a... a fork of the of the source xsds ah i see right um and likewise the assemblies so for me the urls are the more important part right now because we're still fighting v3 urls a lot yeah yep in yep. search um so adding v5 into the mix doesn't help that and the fact that and on top of that given the fact that we want to try to do backwards compatible stuff in v5 i'm inclined to try the second option and come up with something that does identify elements and attributes that are new um well so that we can try annotating the existing schema and see how far that takes us i would i that would be the route i would go in v5 given the plans we're making and then we can see the get the pain points from that and we don't add to the confusion of for search engines of how many different Wix URLs can there be for access modifiers and so on and so forth. Right, right. For all the different elements. So I would vote for two right now. Yeah, that's reasonable. Um, I'm, I have to kind of see how it's going to turn out. Um, right now, sorry, uh, the schema is fine. Um, I, I think that will work okay. Um, again, as you point out, we're not planning on significant changes in the schema that would make, you know, co-locating V4 and V5 a real problem. The the API reference is a little iffier um, because uh, you know yeah. we we pull we pull the the assemblies. I think we pull the assemblies from NuGet and then scan them for the for the doc comments. Actually, I don't remember exactly how that works, and I should because I wrote it. But yeah, the, you know, at some point we're going to have v five assemblies, and um, I don't know how well that's going to work. Uh, it will probably be okay for like data and accessibility. I suspect it's not going to be very good for MBA core, for example. Or maybe it is, and it's just the underneath that's all there. So, um, I, I, yeah, let's tackle that problem. I, I'd rather tack. I'd like to try to tackle that problem in the way that we're talking here, in yep. this way. And okay. maybe I, I, don't, I don't disagree. And maybe we that falls over so bad that we do end up going. All right, so the API doc is version, but the elements are not. Interesting. Or the okay. elements are annotated and the API doc is versioned because of reasons. But yep. we'll have reasons at that point if we do such a thing. Okay. Um, but the API doc is a good point. Make sure that's probably harder to annotate. But maybe not. Well, it, my concern there isn't the annotation because we can still do that. It's the most things are going to be okay with annotations, I think. Um, but some will not, mm -hmm. you know, some are going to, you know, well, 
my assumption was that MBA core is an example of, of a thing that's going to, you know, kind of blow up. Right. right. But maybe not. And that would be fine. Yeah. All right. Let's try for the second bullet here, build with annotations, and then let's see if we fall down as we go along. Yep. I agree. Sweet. All right. Uh, 7757. Incompatibility of workflow complications with directly referenced .NET libraries and Wix projects. So I've read this a couple times, and I'm now pretty convinced that this person in all of this wants to directly reference .NET assemblies to call them as custom actions. Um, because it points out that you need an intermediate class library to host the, the .NET libraries and the custom actions um, that are compiled separately and all of this. And so once a way of being able to call straight into .NET code, custom, NuGet code as a custom action. Sorry, and, I'm, I'm confused. If you're building a custom action, you have your package references in the CS project and they work just correct. as you'd expect. Everything works fine. The issue here is creating the CS, the, the, the CS project for the .NET custom action. The fact that you have to create a C Sharp project to reference these .NET assemblies. So rather, you just reference .NET assembly and be able to call actions into it straight from Wix. I, so it's what? this, developers should sorry. be able to directly reference .NET libraries and NuGet packs directly with Wix without need for intermediate projects. A more seamless integration with seamless streamlined development workflow, risk composure, and minimize potential errors. It's all about creating, right? The development of reusable libraries, custom actions is pivotal for many developers. This makes me sad, this is bad. Um, and I don't think I want to promote that. So this here is that. Anyway, so it's basically saying, I need to create a lot of custom actions and the current method produced cumbersome, non-scalable, I don't know, and developer unfriendly, especially for projects, extensive dependencies and custom actions. And no, like, I don't, I'm still confused because you, you still have to build the custom action code. Right, but th there's nothing in here that says how we would call straight into .NET things. Right, you still need a custom action you have assembly to, DLL pair. You have to glue yourself to the MSI API. Yeah. So this this whole I thing, I've read that. this many times and it doesn't make any sense on all those fronts. So uh, no, I'll, I'll put a response to it, but no. <laughs> also, the fact that people want to drive the world from custom actions is like, yeah, let, let's talk about what you're doing there because this this is not the goal, getting people to write more code. Right? We just saw a project come through a fire giant where someone like has all this stuff. And they have all these custom actions and all like 80% of their custom actions could have just been standard MSI actions and they wouldn't have any custom actions, but they just were like, oh, I'm just going to write C sharp and I'm just going to make everything. And I'm like, stop, stop, stop. So this goes, given what I just saw and this comment, I'm like, this goes against everything of what you should be doing and the direction you should be going. And I don't think we should be promoting any of it. So I've, I've read this many times going, no, 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 no. This is not the right way to go. So, and and if I've completely missed the point, then he can leave a comment later. But no, that's, the, as understood, that is an anti-feature to the whole world of the, everything. All right. All right, cool. Going back. We're done with triage, right? Um, I guess you, uh, I'll just respond to that one, Bob. You can leave triage on. I'll get it and I will respond okay. to it. We'll do that way. I was like, we have to make that one go away, but there we go. All right, going back, let's talk about the, where did I go? Okay, did I not switch slides? All right, whatever, here we go. Back to uh, the thing that was talked about last Thursday that has been underpinning these, or these thoughts that came about when Bob said, uh, has been promoting the idea of a lot more default I want to call it the default feature, but I can't because there is a feature that's the default feature. Um, the the default symbols, the us providing a lot more defaults in Wix um, for things so that you can have less code inside and we'll just take care of things for you. The default feature feature is one of them where we give you a feature. If you don't have one in your MSI, so you don't have to define a feature. Because in the world as we go forward, if you're building a lot of MSIs to be built in bundles, you don't need to have a feature floating around out there. Things like that, simplifications of the language. From that came this very, very low level concept that has gone through a couple different names. I've settled on calling them virtual symbols, which are essentially just like in C-sharp, you can have 
uh, methods in a class that are marked virtual, you can then inherit from that class and have an override uh, method that hides the parent method. So you have a, the ability to override the method of your parent class and have it disappear, um, have your code called instead. So the idea of virtual symbols is that we would be able to have a, uh, well, and we already have them. For example, in Wix 4, you don't have to define program files folder. If you don't define programs file folder, Wix will give it to you. Um, and it, with a default name, which I think is like P files, short, short name. You don't get the long extra stuff. It's like nice, concise. And for most people, it just works. Same for target a whole bunch of other things. So what if we then expanded that to more things? And in so doing, when Bob brought this up, the idea of virtual symbols, we could formalize those very specific cases that we have in Wix around default, um, directories and also, uh, or sorry, we call them standard directories and then also standard actions. We've done that in, since uh, Wix 2, I think. Um, we've pulled in the actions that you need by default. So let's formalize all that and call it virtual symbols. So the experiment was to, to do so. Uh, did the hour and a half spike on it and then I played with it a little bit more over the weekend and the whole thing went very, very well in the end. Um, the changes were exactly the changes I would expect they would be. And then I went a little bit farther on the weekend and I took what are standard directories and standard actions and I changed them from being handled specially to just being virtual symbols that you could then override using this new functionality that I'd built on that last Thursday. And things generally worked and all the bugs that I found in that made sense. It was like, just kind of the way I hacked some of this stuff in, there was some knock-on effects after that. Which means that the idea of being able to take these symbols that are standard, putting them into a Wix lib inside Wix, and just defining them like normal, like just a Wix lib with all the symbols, marking them virtual, that you then as a user could continue to work as you do in V4, and we could add more default symbols like the default feature and so on and so forth from here. And they'll just pull it out of this lib that you get with every build for free in part of Wix. That's why I call it the standard lib. It'll be like built into the Wix build system. So you'll just always get it unless you explicitly say you don't want it, which is a very similar behavior to most of the other compilers out there like C++ and Rust and these things. You can say, I don't want the standard library. And then you have to provide your own if you end up referring to it. It, it all just kind of holds together very nicely, very concretely. Most users will never even know <laughs> that any of this is happening underneath, but it, it uh, basically uh, formalizes this concept that we've had called overriding, that we have some things that are marked overridable. Um, Wix variables, bind variables are one of them. Um, actions are another. Um, the standard directories we do special, but we don't mark them overridable, but they essentially are overridable. Um, and there's something else. There's another one that I can't remember off the top of my head right now that were marked overridable, huh? Log strings. Log strings. I haven't pulled log strings. Well, we, I haven't decided about log strings. I need to do more investigation on those. They're, they're, they're kind yeah, of their they're own thing, different. but maybe they shouldn't be. Maybe Anyway, so there's that. Um, so all of this worked out really well. It cleaned up all of these things and I'm able to like go through and get rid of the word overridable everywhere and just replace anything that was overridable and mark it virtual. And it just worked like I wanted it to. It was very, very nice. The challenge, the consideration I still have to think about this and which is why at this point, I think this works really well. I think it works extremely well and is much better than us hard coding, continuing to hard code. Uh, symbols in the system that can be overridden, like the standard directories. This is a generalization of that. So we can just add more as we think of them from versions without having to continually change the deep internal workings of Wix. Um, the tricky part is that I don't think all symbols can be virtual. You can't just override anything um, out of the blue and have things work. The case that I have right now, I'll, I'll try to explain. If it doesn't make sense, don't worry, because it's really, you have to kind of be all the way in this, deep in the weeds to make it. But imagine you have component A and component B, and you have uh, file A in component A, and it's virtual. 
And then in component B, you say, here's file A and override the virtual A. Now that file, the virtual A is tied to component A, the, vir the override A is tied to component B, but if we allow files to be overridable, then that means that the virtual file in component A disappears and now this file ID B is referenced both by component A and component B because it overrode the virtual. And that doesn't work. <laughs> like that, that makes no sense, does not work, should not be allowed. So not every symbol in Wix will be allowed to be virtual, which means that we're still kind of in the world where things that used to be able to be mark overridable naturally can be over uh, can be virtual and it will just work. And we have to kind of sort out what it means. Uh, so I'm thinking we'll open up virtual to certain classes of symbols. And then we kind of go uh, for uh, as we go along and figure out what things can be uh, marked uh, uh, over uh, can be marked virtual. Uh, like I haven't thought it through, but I think properties probably can be. And that may clean up some problems for us where we have properties right. floating around there. I haven't thought about it deeply, but properties might. Um, but it's not. it might not be a very long list in Wix 5, but uh, the whole underlying pipeline underneath will clean up a lot of various parts having this concept of virtual symbols. And then as we make sure that we can apply it to more and more things carefully and correctly, that would work really well. For example, the yeah, one that I'd I'm like to try is dialogues. I don't think it'll work for dialogues given their complexity, but like being over to being able to override dialogues instead of having to yank them out of the, the, the hook, hook them up and then plug them all back in. It would be like, that would be a much better experience for overriding directories going forward. I don't think that will fix in Wix five, but it's one of those kind of cases I, I want to kind of wrap my head around as we go yeah. through the design considerations here. Well, so, I like the idea of opting in, you know, individual symbol types. Um, dialogue is definitely an interesting case. Mm -hmm. um, I suspect you're right in that it, it it's not going to immediately work. Um, hmm. Yeah, so, I I think the problem <laughs> the problem is going to be that you know we, as we consider what might or might not work. It's that time of sitting down and, and sketching it out and thinking about it that's going to go, oh, right, we can only do a few of these every year because you know it takes a week of deep thinking. Maybe, um, and that's fine. If it gets us these that we know we have here, I I'm, I'm feel pretty good about it, so. Absolutely. Um, so we'll see, anyway, so um, it, was, it was nice to be able to do it an hour and a half and kind of go, huh, this worked about as well as I thought it would. Now I think I can say that this should work so I can now go and start writing it down and, and you know cutting out more of the edge cases. Uh, the first thing was, would it work at all? And it did, so that was pleasant. So yep. that's the state of virtual symbol standard lib. Uh, I will move forward with these a little bit farther and then um, apply them to the things that, uh, and the primary uses or the first cases are, uh, look at the things that Bob has and then I'll go from there. Very cool. All right. So questions, comments, um, things people want to talk about, other things going on, stuff. Wix 5 is moving along. We're already in October, which is kind of crazy. Um, nothing like the last minute. Uh, looking forward, I think the next meeting will be uh 17th that should be fine oh hey 17th and then if we keep on our current path that would put us right on 31st um halloween's on a uh, not a holiday is it right we could have our meeting in the morning and everybody go trick-or-treat at night that would work right um i guess we have next meeting to decide all right so i think october 16th this time slot is kind of our next one 17th what did i say 16th yeah october 17th um October 17th, two Tuesdays from now. Uh, the other Tuesday. There's there's three Tuesdays for us this month if we wanted. That's right. That's kind of cool. All right. Um, other stuff going on. Yeah. 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 So, yes, there will be a whip. That's what I was working my way to is figure out if there should be. A, do virtual symbols work at all? And once I had them kind of working, I'm like, all right, now there will be a whip that they can work. 
and Zach, yes, uh, they are pretty interesting. They're very, very low level, very, very low level. I don't know how many people will use them, but it, we will use them in Wix to provide a lot of functionality that people probably won't even know. And then we'll see where it goes from there. So, all right, that's what I got. Um, anything else from you, Bob? Stuff going on? Good? No, now I'm, now I'm waiting for you to finish your standard library so I can yeah, pull some of, more of this no, no. stuff in. I, I'm doing all of this. You're writing the standard library, right? Because that's where all the default things live. Um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we'll be back in two weeks. Um, I am also looking at the burn thing and people, in case people are wondering, wait, what about that whole out of proc burn thing? Yes, I am already looking at that and what it will take to make that happen too. So two weeks from now, October 17th, we'll be back here. Same time, same place. Until then, you guys have a good time. Oh, and I'm on deployment dojo tomorrow night or tomorrow afternoon, basically almost 26 hours from now. If you want to join me then, I'll see you in a little over day. Bye. Bye.